Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Vlog's Neat and for Christmas, Jerry and I gifted my parents a home brewing kit. We're gonna make beer. We helped them brew their very first beer and don't worry, I have documented the entire thing. So look out for that video. But the brew kit, weirdly enough, or at least I thought it was weird, didn't come with a hydrometer. So I wanted to also gift my parents a hydrometer. However, when it came to using the hydrometer on brew day, I realized the hydrometer didn't come with a tube to put liquid in to use the hydrometer. And we had nothing laying around the house that would satisfy those needs. So we didn't get an original specific gravity measurement of the beer, which, yeah, kind of hurts my heart a little bit. Uh, I like numbers. But I still wanted my parents to know how to use the hydrometer so that they can see, one, where we were at during the fermentation of the current batch of beer that they have, and two, so that hopefully if they decide to do future batches of beer, they will know how to use a hydrometer. So I took my dad through step-by-step -step how to use a hydrometer. And I've gone into a deep dive of what specific gravity is and how to measure it using a hydrometer in this video here. Uh, so go check that out if you haven't already and wanna get a little bit nerdy. But this video is much more for the beginners who have never used a hydrometer before because my dad had a lot of questions and there was a lot of confusion. Things that I thought were super clear because I've been using hydrometers for years were not necessarily so clear for him. So, yeah. Are you ready to give an update on what's been going on with the fermentation thus far? I am. Okay, it's been sitting there for, uh, now this makes four days? Yeah. Yep, and that's where we are. What does fermentation look like? How much bubbling is going on? Right now? Yeah. There was a lot more bubbling than there is right now. Correct. There is very little bubbling that I don't have my glasses on. But you're still able to see some bubbles. A little, if Correct. I put my glasses on. Under the Christmas tree, in addition to the beer brewing kit, we also got you a... Uh, what do you call it? Hydrometer. Hydrometer. We also got you a hydrometer. That's because I like to know the starting specific gravity of my beer or whatever it is that I'm fermenting because that will tell you how much alcohol you're going to get out, right? Correct. But we don't really need it. It's a nice thing to have. Correct. Correct. This will still make beer. It'll have some alcohol in it, probably around 5% or so but we're not sure because we didn't take a specific gravity reading to start. Now, even though we had the hydrometer, we had nothing to put the hydrometer in. So rookie mistake on my part, I ordered a hydrometer without realizing that it didn't, didn't come with a tube to measure anything in. So now, what just arrived in the mail, dad? The a tube. Yes, this so is the hydrometer. we got a graduated cylinder right here. So I'm going to show my dad how to take a specific gravity reading using the hydrometer. And your plan is to just keep this sitting here for two weeks two total, weeks. right? Correct. However, if there is no more fermentation going on and no more sugar left in there, which we'll find out by using the hydrometer, it's time to bottle. You're able to bottle. Wow. So Is that unusual that it could happen that quickly? No, not unusual. Okay. No, uh, this, I mean, this yeast worked very, very quickly, I thought. So okay. two weeks, I think, is a very conservative amount of time, which is why the instructions told you to wait two weeks. It should be done fermenting and all the sugars should be completely consumed and converted to alcohol. However, we're just checking to see where it's at in the process. Okay. How much does it have to go? Okay, now Robin, if I was watching this video and I was looking back here and I see, oh, there's fluid in there. Yeah. What is that fluid in there? You That's tell what me. I would be asking. What, are, what, do, what do we put in there? We just sanitize this. Yep. Water and sanitizer. Yep. 
so that uh, I assume we're going to take that that sanitizer out of there, and that's where we're going to put our beer. Correct. And that's where we're going to get our reading. Correct. Okay. Cool. I wouldn't know that unless I asked that. Yeah, we're just sanitizing this right now because it just came from an Amazon box. Okay. Yep. Great. And you still want to sanitize everything from the boil on because you don't want to introduce any bacteria. Even though the yeast are what's most dominant right now and it would be really hard to overtake them, you don't want to introduce any bacteria, especially as you're like putting it into the bottle. Ugh, imagine having a great tasting beer and then putting it into the bottle and realizing that you introduce some bacteria and you end up having something that, that tastes like vinegar. Not fun. That wouldn't be great. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's get to it. But well, you shouldn't just have so that people know they yeah. don't have to have this. They don't have to have it. It's a nice thing to have. It's a nice thing to have. And if you're going to become a regular home brewer, right. You need a hydrometer. But since this is the first time, I could have done that without the hydrometer, but it's nice to have. So. Yeah, correct. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the stopper and airlock. And just be careful not to... Should we take to... that off first? Or... Yeah, we can remove it all as one. There we go. Oh, look at all that. Wow, look at the gunk. Yeah. We are going to carefully insert the tube, trying not to get... Too much of that crap. Too much of that. <laughs> but it's fine. All right. Will you hold the um, the cylinder down here? I will. So I'm going to uh, suck a little bit of it and get it going. That's our beer. Right? That's it. Yeah. And actually, you can give that a taste. Ooh, interesting. I think we made a good beer. Should I taste it? Give it a little taste. Very good. Yeah. Well, it needs to be carbonized. Yeah, but you can tell that there's a little bit of bubbles in there. Yes. Okay. All right, so now we're going to drop in the hydrometer. Okay, so this is a triple scale hydrometer, which means we can read specific gravity, potential alcohol, and bricks. Specific gravity is this one. Right. Then the next one is percent potential alcohol. And then this third one is bricks. Oh. It's just like how your ruler has both inches and centimeters and millimeters, right? Just imagine that they all mean the same thing. They're just different units. My old rulers, when I was growing up, didn't have the centimeters and the meters and all that. They had the inches. But your new rulers now have centimeters. I don't really pay too much attention to those. Okay. But anyway, all right. I so get it's what the you're same saying. thing. But let's check out the specific gravity reading. We're going to look at where the liquid level is lined up. It's just under the 10. Okay. I don't know what's that. About. Can I lift it? Yeah, you can lift it. You can to kind of see what the scale's all about. Uh, it's actually about say fifteen. Okay, you think it's at fifteen? Maybe thirteen. So that's one point zero one three. Now, 1.000, it's when it's fully fermented out. And this beer most likely started around 1.050, 1.060, somewhere around there. So look at how much we fermented. We're almost there. Wow. Yeah. So it still has some residual sugars, but when that ferments down to 1.000, Yep. and there's no more activity in here, Yep. that means... We can bottle. We can bottle. With, where the Correct. fluid level was. Right, yes. exactly. Right. So, so that, if it gets to there, that means it's done? If it gets to 1.000, you see the blue right up top? Oh, up here? Yep. Oh. oh. That means it's done. Oh, I see. So it's one... 
and that's how we got 1.13 1 or 1.013? 1 1.013, 1 yep. Uh, 1.013, yep. okay. Approximate potential alcohol content. I okay. Don't, I don't know how you got to that number. Yeah, okay, so where was the liquid level when you were reading the specific gravity? It was right here. Okay. No, it was right here. Yep, okay, so just slide that over now to the other scale. But same. You mean over same, here? Yep. So now you're over on at bricks. Okay, so I was right at about that looks to three. Be about three bricks. Three, yeah. Okay. Right there. So bricks is just another unit of measurement. All right. So what's the one in the middle? The pot the percent potential alcohol is like yeah one point something or whatever. Yeah, between between one and two, right? Right. For like mental math. The easiest one to compare start to finish is the percent potential alcohol. Because if it starts at, say, 6% potential alcohol, mm -hmm. and when it's done fermenting is at 0% potential alcohol, that means all of those sugars fermented out and it's a 6% ABV beer. And some beers will even drop a little bit below that. So you know if it's there or you below, mean, anywhere in that blue, that means it's done fermenting. You want to do a quick mental math thing, hypothetical mental math thing? Sure. And you know what the uh, specific gravity is at now, correct? 13. Oh, yeah. 1, yeah. 1 1.013, which equates to what potential alcohol? Yeah, yeah so right that's two. That. So it's right about, it's right 1. at like 1.8. Yeah. Okay, let's assume that we took a measurement when this started and it was at 1.060. What was the what would be the percent potential alcohol there? Do the same thing you just did. But now at 1.060. So go down to 60. Oh, all the way down here? Yep. Oh. Mhm. Mm and that's how it might have started out. Let's assume that's where it started out. What would be the percent potential alcohol? It would be about 8%. Okay. So if we, if we uh, wanted to know the amount of alcohol that's in here right now, you would do 8% minus what it is at now, which you're saying there's 1.8% potential alcohol, right. which would be? So about ballpark 6%. 6%. <laughs> so this, assuming that it starts at 1.060 or 8% potential alcohol, would say that what you just sipped on was about 6% ABV and still has some more to go. Ah. But again, that's assuming we know the specific, we starting know the specific start. gravity. And yeah. you would do the starting when you first. Correct. Before fermentation starts. So uh, because we sanitized everything, even though we took a little sip, we can toss this can right, back right back in. in. Yeah, we don't want to waste anything. No, we don't. But in any event, in two weeks, this will be done. This should be done, yeah. Two right. weeks is a conservative time to let this ferment. All right. So what that means is that anyone who does not have one of these just waits the two weeks. Yep. And that's it. Yep. And make sure that there's no more bubbling going on. Right. Okay. Yep. So I hope this video was helpful for you if you are new to brewing and don't know how to use a hydrometer or don't know whether or not you need a hydrometer for brewing. If after watching this video, you still have questions about hydrometers, specific gravity, percent potential alcohol, bricks, you name it, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer those for you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below and do not forget to subscribe. Now, before I go, I do want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. And if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel, I've got a link in the description below where you can join our neat community over on Patreon.